In episode eight, Joe realizes that it was him the entire time. The Reese Montreux that he's grown to know was actually just a figment of his imagination. He can't believe it. Fake Reese tells him that the actual Reese, the one that's dead in front of him, wasn't lying. He didn't know Joe. Joe assumed that he did because every time he saw him in public, he did recognize him, so he would give him a nod, but they never actually conversed. It was all made up. It all started when Joe kidnapped Marianne. Up until this point, he thought he let her go, but he didn't. He roofied her drink and slipped her off the train, unconscious. He brought her back to his flat where he tied her up and gagged her, trying to convince her to get in a relationship with him. While trying to convince Marianne that Joe was the right person for her, he continued to drug her up. And she knew it. She knew that he was slipping her stuff, but she didn't care if she was thirsty at the time. But he wasn't just obsessed with Marianne. He was obsessed with Reese Montrose. During this time, he was listening to his audiobook, watching YouTube videos, interviews. Everything Reese, he was consuming. He didn't even realize it, but his new infatuation wasn't a woman, it was Reese. All that Marianne was focused on was getting back to her daughter. She knew that she could use Joe's drugging against him. One particular night, Joe thought that he drugged her up, but she actually didn't drink whatever it was that night, so she was fully conscious, just pretending. This night, however, was an unfortunate night, because Joe puts her in a box and wheels her down to where he's keeping that cage. While he's dragging Marianne's body down to the cage, he's listening to Reese's audiobook. All of that, though, is background noise for Marianne, and when she has her chance, she pushes Joe away and tries to escape. But Joe grabs her, pulls her off the steps, and it results in Marianne breaking her arm. Joe gets so mad at Marianne because he feels like she just doesn't understand. They get in a big argument about letting Marianne go to be back with Juliet, and Joe continuously saying, I would never hurt her, until he yells, Quiet! I would never hurt her. But then Joe gets weird. He just starts repeating, this isn't me. I'm not that man. When Marianne looked into his eyes, she could tell that he was a different person. His eyes were empty. And then Joe bashes his head against the cage. Maybe it was all the Reese Montrose in the background, but that's when he created this figment of his imagination. Because when he gets up, he flat out looks at Marianne and says, I'm not Joe. Joe had developed a split personality. And that split personality would bring Marianne food every night, but he also brought her pills. Marianne got really worried because she knew that these pills would force her to relapse. She wasn't really quite sure why Joe would do this, but then again, it wasn't Joe that she was dealing with anymore. It was this fake Reese. The real Joe was still convinced that he had let Marianne go. He was a changed man, but he wasn't. After Joe is forced to get rid of the body of the real Reese Montrose, he and the figment of his imagination head to Joe's apartment where this figment sits him down and explains everything. It's hard to believe for Joe that he was talking to himself when he thought he was talking to Reese. But the hardest part is accepting the fact that he hadn't changed, that he actually did murder those people. Malcolm for insulting Marianne, Simon for taking advantage of young artists, and Gemma was on to him. And it wasn't Reese who killed them, it was Joe, although he doesn't remember any of it. This figment of his imagination represents who Joe really is. Even though Joe wanted to change and he went on this redemption tour, now, deep down, this figment is really who Joe wants to be. A killer. It turns out Roald was right the entire time. Joe was, in fact, the Eat the Rich killer. As he's having a conversation with his inner self about how crazy it is that he locked himself in a burning building... His inner self mentions that Marianne is in a cage, and she hasn't been fed in a long time. The thing is, Joe doesn't remember where Marianne is. The only one who knows where she is, is Joe's inner self. This fake Reese isn't really keen to help Joe figure this out. Joe also knows that he has to get to class. Appearances are everything, and he needs to appear like everything's going all right. That's really tough to do, though, because the disappearance of the real Reese Montrose has hit national news. Acting normal isn't going to be easy for Joe. While walking to class, he runs into Kate, who is dealing with an issue of her own, although a lot less serious. It's the fact that everybody's been invited to Phoebe and Adam's engagement party. And Kate knows that what Phoebe really needs isn't a party, it's psychiatric care. She's worried about her friend getting legally bounded to a leech. And that's exactly what Adam is. The hardest part for Kate is that Phoebe isn't returning her calls. She has no idea where she is or how to track her down. And Joe, 
who was half listening to the conversation, says, well, I've never seen Phoebe wear the same outfit twice. Just go to where she shops. She'll probably run into her. It's great advice because when Kate does track Phoebe down, she finds her and she's surprised because Phoebe says, you've been avoiding me. Kate assures her that that's not the case. She just says, I think my messages got lost. She knows she has to play this thing delicately. She tells Phoebe that she's got a car waiting for her to take her to get that rest that they agreed on. But Phoebe isn't even listening. She tells Kate, I have something to tell you. That engagement party? It's not an engagement party. It's our wedding. Kate gets super concerned for her friend and starts convincing her not to go through with such a rushed wedding, and that's when Adam comes out and ruins everything. His ears really perk up when he overhears Kate mention the word prenup. He then proceeds to gaslight Kate, saying every time you're around, Phoebe's sad, and then they head off, and Kate wasn't really able to do anything she wanted. Joe also headed off to class, where there's one person amazingly missing, and that's Nadia. That's because Nadia found Marianne in that cage. After Marianne explains who she is, why she's there, Joe Goldberg, the entire backstory, Nadia wants to call the police, but Marianne says, no, you can't. It won't matter. He'll always get away with it, and he'll come back for me. Nadia, this guy stalked me halfway across the world. He will find me again. Marianne then explains that because of her daughter, she needs to do this in a way that gets her back to her daughter safely. Nadia vows to come back to Marianne with some kind of plan. And Marianne's advice to her is, do not let him find out that you know about me. Because of the run with Marianne, Nadia shows up late for class. But it's obvious to everybody in the room that she's just not as engaged. Joe especially notices and is a little bit concerned, so he has to speak with her after class. He asks, are you okay? And Nadia, thinking fast, blames it on Edward, saying that she's just having boy problems. And Joe believes it. Joe then heads home because he's got to focus on finding out where Marianne is. His inner self is still not being much help. He's pretty much turned his entire apartment upside down and hasn't found a thing. Eventually, though, with the help of this fake Reese, he is able to find the key that's hidden in Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. But he's also able to find the box. He keeps one for everybody he's obsessed with, and Reese is no different. It's got receipts, chewing gum, sweaty gym towel, but it also has a map of Reese's favorite places to go. So he goes around town looking at these places until eventually he reaches the Indian restaurant, where right across the street he sees an abandoned building that would be perfect for keeping somebody hidden. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel and subscribing to my Patreon. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. If you left a comment, I don't get back to you. I usually don't check the comments unless they're like a super comment. Also, if you don't see the next video up on the end screen, not to worry, it'll be up in a day or two.